we are here at the Labadi Beach Hotel where the first Stamp Big Bang graphic breakfast meeting of the year just ended. And it all had to do with tourism and whether it's the golden egg of our economy. So I'm here with respected actress, Akofa Ejeni Osedo. I hope I got the name right. Akofa Ejeni. Akofa Ejeni. Okay, so Akofa, we all know the work you've put in, in the film sector and now with the food and catering sector. Um, what are your thoughts on how these two sectors can contribute to tourism in Ghana? Well, it's, it can contribute a lot. Um, you know what? When the tourists come, they eat. And so food tourism is, is very crucial and an integral part of the whole uh, 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 tourism agenda. It's one of the value chains, okay? And so um, showcasing Ghanaian cuisine, you know, and promoting what we eat goes a long way. To, to, to help the industry. When people come, they want the authentic food. They want, you know, the bamboo, your fish, how you prepare your food. And we have variety of, 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 of meals or cuisine that we can showcase to the world. And so that is one area that should also be looked at. Uh, and it's not just at the restaurants. You know, there are food vendors by the wayside. People want to experience the street life and buy food for the vendors. So quality control, checks and all those things to help the food vendors by the roads. I've got most of them at the first point of uh, contact for these tourists when they go on the road. So helping them to keep the, the standard and sanitation and all that uh, that goes a long way. Now, when you talk about film, I think film should be prioritized, you know, because uh, I would say that even spending 500000 to do a one CNN uh, uh, advert, yeah. that $500,000 can be given to three filmmakers, I'm telling you, and will do wonderful things with it. The, the best way I see it in trying to promote our tourist uh, destinations is by putting it in our films. Yeah. That's, that's the easiest way for it to reach the whole world. So there should be a collaboration with the authority and filmmakers. You know, these, these are some things that have to be commissioned. You don't leave it to independent filmmakers because their minds may not be looking Align, that way. Yeah. Yes. And everybody is looking for money. So they will make the kind of films they think will bring them fast money. But this is a national agenda that it has to be intentional and deliberate that we want to attract tourists to Ghana for them to choose Ghana as the best tourist destination. So the fastest way, the best way is using film as your weapon or vehicle to, to, to send that message across. Yeah. So, so personally, with regards to your business, your catering business and also as a filmmaker, which initiatives have you put in place to capitalize on the 1.1 million visitors that visited the country last year, the numbers we are looking forward to in this 2024? Well, you know, some 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 catering uh, uh, places or restaurants have their names in the list of the uh, yeah, GTA. Of, of the GTA, and so they they give the list or they let the tourists know these places when they come. So it trickles, it goes to all of us. We get quite a share of it, you know, if if you're registered with them. If you're lucky, you, it depends on where they are at a particular time. So if they are in Kumasi, Kumasi people will benefit. And if they are in Accra, there are various restaurants that they go to. So yes, you get a little bit of it. Not as much as you want to, but you get a little bit of it. But uh, when it comes to film, we, we are really shortchanged. We are not getting any funding to make uh, more movies because, I mean, when the tourists come, they have to relax, they have to be entertained. Yeah. So when the, where, where do they go to? What plays are they going to watch? What musical events, what cultural dances, what films are they going to watch? So we don't have enough of that to feed them when they come. Yeah. So that is something that we should be looking at. I think that we, we should have a discussion. We are not collaborating enough. I heard, I heard uh, one of the speakers talk about importing beef and importing vegetables yeah. and stuff like that. And I'm going, you know, really? How is that? 
How, how is that happening? We need to create wealth for our people here in Ghana. So why are we importing beef? Why are we importing vegetables? We have a lot of people who are growing vegetables. We have cattle various all over the place. Why are we not getting them together? Let them form a cooperative so they are giving money, create a big ranch so that you have the cattle you need, have the quality control, the kind of beef you are expecting. If they know that there's enough takers, that there's business, all these restaurants take beef, this amount of beef every month. I don't see how this, this cannot happen. If all these vegetable growers know and they form a cooperative and they are producing vegetables. We even import flowers. That's true. You know, so I think things are uh, um, isolated and, and we are not collaborating and, and, and uh, integrating everything together. So I think that the, the, the government and the private sector need to sit down and and I know now some of these things and we find the loophole so we can collaborate better instead of uh, people doing things in, uh, in isolation. We have this um uh Legon has their great school, right? Yes. Yeah, so what what how are they not influencing or working together? Yes. Because what I see is government and academia are separated. So they have all the brilliant papers and all the things that they write, but government is not tapping into that to use it. So there has to be a marriage between academia and government. Instead of writing all those nice papers, they have most of the solutions and it's on their university shops. And government is also doing its own thing. I think that we should tap the brains of the people who know, tap the brains of the experts. Yeah. and marry it together and then i think uh, we would go far we would okay, go so far and create wealth for our own people yeah so this is a final question for me i'll be putting you on the spot though i hope you don't <laughs> mind um top five tourist sites in ghana for you top five tourist sites top five tourist sites i will start with the one in my hometown <laughs> me a major fear. you know we have the work way there yes. there's a new work work with there that's where i come from that's number one that's number one for me <laughs> I mean, by us. Yes. <laughs> um, the other one, hmm. Well, I think Boti Falls is nice. Yes. yes. I'm yes. busy Boti. Uh, three more. Yes, three more. Ooh. Mm. That tells you that we are not doing enough domestic tourism. tourism yes. yes, because the hotels are too expensive. Yeah. You know, the hotels are too expensive. Spending a week in a hotel. So we want to go to the Bali yeah. uh, uh, park and stuff like that. If you stay in a hotel, a good one, of course, okay. for a week, that money can take you to London. Yeah, so can I give you some suggestions? Paga Crocodile Pond. <laughs> yes, that number one. three. Larabanga Mox. Okay, I haven't been there. So that's number four. It's okay. left for the last one. If you could just help us, last one, tourist site. Um, it could be in Accra, Kwame Nkrumah Mausoleum. Oh, yes, yes, okay. that too. Okay. That too. Yes. Thank you very it's, much, It's, it's a nice place, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we, we, should, we should be doing a lot more domestic, domestic tourism, tourism yes, but yes. the prices of the hotels do have to come down okay. so that it will be easier for us to just go out and shop. Thank you very much. Oh, oh.